You're listening to Deloitte BizPod. It all started in China. In December last year, a new virus, now known as COVID-19, was detected in the city of Wuhan. However, with the number of Chinese COVID-19 related deaths topping in mid-February, China is slowly getting back on its feet. So what is next for China? And can we learn something from China's experiences with recovery? In this special episode of BizPod, Maybrit Skov, director of Deloitte Economics in Denmark, talks to Su Zitao, chief economist and partner in Deloitte China. Thank you so much uh, for taking your time to uh, make us wiser on the situation in uh, in China, which is from an economic perspective very interesting um, for us here in, in Europe and in, in the Nordic as well. Um, so let me start by asking you, how is the situation in China in, in general? We hear that uh, things are slowly uh, getting back to normal. Um, things are actually getting back to normal at a faster pace than I anticipated. As you can see, I'm talking to you from my office, not from home. Okay. Outside my office, a lot of people actually working from their cubicles. They are wear- wearing um, masks, of course, and social distancing is being observed. But you begin to see people in restaurants in coffee shop. But of course, movie theaters are closed, no sporting event. So I would say right now, uh, China is facing a trade off. Resuming business or resumption of business versus containing virus, preventing the second wave. This is not an easy trade off, but things are indeed getting back to normal. That, that that sounds good. So far, how has the Chinese economy been affected uh, by the corona pandemic? Uh, which sectors, for instance, has been hit the most? And in which sectors do you see that, that the recovery has, has already started? Well, uh, from um, the shock perspective, if you look at a shock, shock is coming from demand, supply, and human psychology. So from that perspective, China is no different from any other countries. But the difference is really the approach. So if we put in some numbers, first quarter, chances are the growth rate will be down by, say, 8%. Second quarter, at the best, is a flat growth. So the whole year, with the stimulus, counter-cyclical measures, which everyone is doing. Now, the growth rate at the best would be three to three and a half percent versus originally at 5.5%. So now you can see that's a direct economic cost. Now, the indirect economic cost is by doing this, the government is being the last resort of both lender and the buyer. So that results in distortions in the economy, which has to be addressed once the virus is gone. So you see, I mean, there are many ways for for us to look at a cost. But speaking about the government, which measures has actually been taken uh, by the Chinese government to help uh, Chinese businesses through the, the, the health crisis? Uh, both now and well, do they have? Well, first of all, you cut interest rate. Again, everyone does that. And secondly, you um, allow government to increase deficit. Again, everyone does that. You are calling me from Denmark. I think what the Danish government has done to stabilize job market is very innovative. So I would even argue what China could do is to take a page from Nordic countries 
So because the objective now is to save small and medium sized enterprises, it's not about economic growth. But of course, China and the Nordic countries are very different. So the rationale is you take top down approach and then the benefit will be trickled down to consumers and the citizens. But my prediction is just more fiscal reliefs will be underway. And I also predict China could be expected by other economies to take maybe more leadership yeah. in generating external demand because China is likely to be the first economy coming out of the crisis and the leading global recovery. And, and do you think that that the Chinese uh, the government uh, uh, will, will do that and that the Chinese economy? Um, that's going to be a very big ask because, mm -hmm. again, think about your government or the government you work with in your region. Um, I suspect whether it's Danish government or Swedish government, they may have a transition plan. So once economic recovery is underway, you remove some of these temporary measures. In China, it's not, it's just not that easy. So yeah. because the government tend to be stronger, so some measures may become permanent. So that is why it is very, very important for China not to over rely on fiscal stimulus. Mm. But from that perspective, you can see potentially there is a conflict between what China has to do and what China is expected in the context of global economy. Yeah. And and speaking about the global economy, uh, how do you see the outlook for the uh, economy uh, in China and, and the worldwide? Well, China external sector import export for China, that's a 40 percent of GDP. So that's much higher than other large economies. But China's neighbors are extremely oriented. To give you example, Singapore, 300 percent external sector over mm. GDP. Even Vietnam, close to 200 percent. Malaysia, about 200 percent. So ultimately, China's economic recovery cannot be isolated from the global economy. Now, I tend to think the lag between China and the developed countries means Western Europe, Northern Europe, North America is about two quarters. Mm -hmm. So the best case scenario is for China to start economic recovery in the beginning of second half this year. And for major economists to follow and in late autumn or beginning of winter. So that's the best case scenario. Can you say something about in which sector um, you see the first sign of recovery? Oh, um, that's quite easy. In the case of China, yeah. you, you look at consumer related sector versus manufacturing sector. Now, without coronavirus, the Chinese economy can pretty much generate 3.5%, 4%, purely based on consumption. I don't think that has been changed. So chances are consumption related industries mm -hmm. will lead manufacturing. Now, when we look at the manufacturing sectors, two sectors, auto related and electronic related, they are being affected by disruption of supply chain, not just in China, also in Europe, auto sector, for example, Italy, France, Spain, and you know that story. So yeah. that's going to be played out the next few quarters. So consumer related sectors, I think will charge ahead. Now services, some of the service just gone, not going to be replaced. And the business travel, I expect sometime in June, but the global tourism may not come back in much later time. No. Interesting. Do you think that the that the Corona crisis uh, 
are going to impact the structure uh, of the global supply chains going forward? Um, I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Because global supply chain has been driven by this notion, maximizing profit. Um, but the lesson of coronavirus is you cannot push profit to that extent. So you need to sacrifice a little bit of profit mm. in order to account for potential risks. Yeah. Do you think that um, the outbreak has uh, led to changes in demand and, and new business opportunities? Yeah, I think um, I think the answer is yes, because uh, in the case of China, I think before um, the outbreak, I think uh, you could argue we have underinvested in healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. Even at the community level. So you definitely have to make up the shortfall. And in fact, you need to do that in order to be better pre prepared for potential second wave or the third wave. In fact, all government have to do that. But in the case of China, clearly there is a shortfall of uh, of uh, 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 healthcare. Secondly, I think hygiene is going to be more emphasized. I think mm -hmm. there's still a long way to go in China, just in terms of hygiene, right? I mean, to reach the level of uh, of developed countries. I would also argue, argue um, coronavirus has highlighted the differences between local government, just in terms of quality of governors. Mm -hmm. So in the short term, I would actually expect consumers to pay even a higher premium to live in a city where quality of governors is mm -hmm. relatively high. That means medical supply and so on and so forth. So I think, I mean, I think, I, I think, I think that's a new demand area. Mm -hmm. Xiao, our time is up. Thank you so much for taking your time uh, to uh, elaborate us on the economic situation in China and worldwide. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, good luck in Denmark. Um, Denmark is one of the most successful economies in the world. <laughs> I will take that with me. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Deloitte BizPod. For more episodes and links to relevant reports and articles, go to bizpod.deloitte.dk and remember to subscribe to stay updated on the latest business trends. That way you will get the new episodes as soon as they're out.